students welcome to this 14th lecture on calculus of variation so till now what we were doing we were doing we, we had this functional and we were trying to find out the extreme values of this functional and these inputs y were fixed at the boundaries so we had this y of a and y of b predefined okay till now this this was what we were doing so our end points were fixed okay now we we are we want that our end point should be free but uh, before barging into the generalized case we will take a simple problem simple uh, free end point problem what is that problem that uh, now we want to find out the extreme values of this functional where the input functions y are such that y at a and y at b they should be along this line they, they can be anywhere on this line they can take any value on this line right so so basically what we want we want that y at x is equal to a can be anything okay it can take any value and y at x is equal to b can also take any value it can be anywhere on this line right this is the free boundary we have now we have these two free boundaries and we want to look at the extreme values of this functional subject to where the functions y are subject to these boundary conditions that y at x is equal to a can take any value and y at x is equal to b can take any value right so let's see uh, how to uh, what are, what will be the corresponding eulers equation in this case right so basically let me change the color okay so we will uh, start with our usual uh, procedure uh, if we want to find out the extreme values of these functionals this functional then we need to compute its variation that is delta j and for that we want to compute the increment okay so you can we have done it several times now so the increment is just j of y plus h plus minus j of y where this h is the increment okay and you must remember that in the last case we had that y of a was fixed and y of b was fixed and now we are uh, we are using y plus h as an input function so y of this was fixed suppose this is y a so y plus h it is also an admissible function so it means y plus h at a should be y of a it says that y at a plus h at a is equal to y a and this is also y a so this this and this cancels so you got h of a is equal to 0 so in the last case we had conditions on this increment function what were those conditions that h of a is equal to 0 and h of b is equal to 0 but these conditions are not available now okay because of these conditions we could have used lemma 1 to derive the Euler's equation so that will be this uh, different thing now that we these are the these are not the available conditions now you have to keep that thing in mind so okay let's do it so we have this del j is equal to as usual this is j of y plus h minus j of y so this is a to b integral a to b f of x comma y plus h comma y dash plus h dash minus f of x y and y dash dx so you use the tailors here Taylor's expansion here and uh, do some manipulation you will get, get that your increment is integral a to b fy times h minus fy dash times h dash dx plus higher order terms okay now compare it with the definition of variation so you will get that this is the variation I will not explain that again because already we have done it several times several times so now this is a this is the variation which we have got and you should keep in mind that we don't have these conditions on h which we had earlier right okay okay fine so now we have let me change the color so now we have this del j is equal to this and this should be uh, uh, okay so del j is this and we know that and this is that point which I have already explained that we don't have these conditions on h that h of a is equal to 0 and h of b is equal to 0 so we don't have these conditions 
and now we know that this uh, necessary condition for y to be a uh, an extremal is that the variation should be zero so we have this necessary condition is del j is equal to zero so if we put del j, del j is equal to zero and integrate keep it as the first term as such integrate the second term by parts so what we will get get this is the first term of del j this is first function integration of second function that is h dash integration that will be h from a to b minus differentiation of first function that will be curly by curly x of f by dash times integration of second function that is hx dx and that is equal to zero this is the necessary condition which we have we already know that the necessary condition for the extreme uh, functions are that uh, is that the variation should be zero right now uh, so what uh, combine these two things you will get fy minus dy by dx fy dash hx dx plus compute this thing at b so you will get fy dash computed at x is equal to b times h of b minus fy dash x is equal to a at x is equal to a times h of a is equal to 0 okay in the earlier case this was 0 this was 0 so we were left with only this term and we had used the lemma 1 lemma 1 says that if you have ax into hx dx a to b 0 for all hx which are continuous and which are vanishing at boundary then ax has to be 0 this was lemma 1 but now we cannot apply that lemma because this hx is not satisfying the conditions of the lemma that is hx is not vanishing at the boundary so that lemma we cannot use now okay okay so what we will do it now now you want that this sum of three terms these are three terms first term second term third term you want that it is it should be zero the whole sum of three terms should be zero for all hx okay for all hx arbitrary functions hx in particular so this is a set of all hx and inside this set is a small subset which is hx such that h of a is equal to h of b is equal to zero right so we want that this relation star should be true for all hx so in particular we want it to be true for this set small set what is this small set this is a set of hx which are vanishing at the boundary so th we want this condition to be satisfied for all hx so in particular we want it should be satisfied for h with h of a and h of b is equal to zero so for that particular h for that particular set we have this thing is equal to zero this thing is equal to zero so we get a to b fy minus dy by dx fy dash hx dx is equal to zero now this is zero for all hx in this small set so we can apply lemma one again so we get that fy minus dy by dx of fy dash is equal to zero so uh, you got it that this condition should be satisfied for all hx so in particular this small it should be satisfied for this small set of hx okay and the condition that it should be satisfied for this small set of hx is this okay this this is the condition which we got so so this is a necessary condition for sure if you want that it should be satisfied for all hx so a particular case a particular set of hx for a particular set of hx it has to be satisfied and that gives you this condition so it means that this is a necessary condition so this is one condition right okay so this is nothing but keep this is nothing but the normal Euler's equation right okay so uh, it means that okay already i have said this thing but let's uh, do it again so it means that for y is equal to yx to be an uh, a solution of the variable endpoint problem y must be a solution of euler's equation right so we have already seen that we got this equation fy minus dy by dx of fy dash is equal to zero this equation has to be satisfied okay so it means that all the extreme uh, functions will come from these equations they'll they'll be the solution of this equation right now it means that whenever y is an extremal then this is zero okay now it means that we had this condition del j is equal to zero was this condition integral fy minus dy by dx of fy dash dx 
प्लस एफ वाई डैश एट वाई इज इक्वल टू बी एच ऑफ बी माइनस एफ वाई डैश एट वाई इज इक्वल टू नॉट वाई एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू बी एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए एच ऑफ ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो राइट दिस वॉज द कंडीशन फॉर द वेरिएशन इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो नाउ यू आर सेंग दैट वेन एवर वाई इज एन एक्सट्रीम फंक्शन देन दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी हैव दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी गेट वी आर लेफ्ट विद दीज टू टर्म्स सो वी हैव डेल जे इज इक्वल टू दिस दिस थिंग and we want it equal to zero so it means that now h is arbitrary okay this should be true for all h so h is arbitrary it means that the coefficients has to be zero the coefficients have to be zero so we have fy dash at x is equal to b times not hp uh, we we should have fy dash at x is equal to b is equal to zero and fy dash at x is equal to a should be zero so basically we have these two more conditions these are called natural boundary conditions these two conditions are called naturally uh, natural boundary conditions so we have so finally what we got is fy dash minus d by by dx of fy is equal to, i'm sorry this is fy minus d by by dx of fy dash is equal to 0 this is a second order differential equation from here you will get a solution with two arbitrary constants and you will find those arbitrary con constants using fy dash at x is equal to a should be 0 and fy dash at x is equal to b should be 0 right these are the this is the differential equation with two boundary conditions which you have to solve earlier this this condition was y at a should be y of a and this condition was y at b should be y of b but now these two conditions are replaced so these are replaced with the natural boundary conditions so this is this is how you will solve a uh variational problem with free boundary okay so let's do one example to keep the uh, thing simple uh, what we uh, what i am doing is uh i have only one i, I have one point fixed and one one point variable one, uh, the other point end, end is free one one end is fixed and other end is variable sorry one end is fixed and other end is free so and what we are trying to uh, do is we are trying to solve the brachistogram problem again so what is our problem we uh, we have this fixed point a comma a the starting point is fixed and we want to drop a particle from here and we are looking for the curves these curves where the second end point can take any value and we are looking for the particular curve for which the time taken by the particle to reach from here to here is minimum that is the brachistogram problem but now the one end point is free right so you already know said this is the brachistogram problem so this is the functional in case of brachistogram problem so and now we have these boundary condition y at a this left point is fixed and y at b can take any value y at b can take any value so you can solve it uh, so uh, we know that what what we have to do we have this fy minus dy by dx of fy dash is equal to 0 and the boundary condition at the left point will be because this is fixed so it will be y of a is equal to a and at right point because this is free we have this condition natural condition fy dash at x is equal to b should be 0 right so we have this differential equation second order differential equation with the, these two boundary conditions we have to solve that already we have solved this uh, equation for this brachistogram problem you know that the solution will be x cycloids so this is x is equal to c theta minus sin theta plus c1 and y is equal to minus c1 minus cos theta now you want y of a is equal to a so basically we want that a comma a should be a point uh, and in particular if we take this 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 point 0 0 just to make the sim uh, things simple so we have this a uh, so it means that 0 0 should pass through Uh, uh this curve should pass through 0 0 it means that x uh, at theta is equal to 0 x should be 0 that implies c1 is equal to 0 right so you get that c1 is equal to 0 and the second condition fy dash at x is equal to b should be 0 so now xy fy dash at not y x is equal to b should be 0 now this is your f you can uh, find the def derivative of this function partial derivative of this function with respect to y dash this is what you will get and you want that this should be zero at x is equal to b okay so
so this is uh, so it uh, that implies that y dash at x is equal to b should be zero now what is y dash dy by dx is d by by d theta into d theta by dx now y is this so it and x is this so therefore dy by d theta is this simple calculus and dx by d theta is this so we have y dash is equal to y dash is the multiplication of this and reciprocal of this so you will get y dash is equal to minus sin theta upon 1 minus cos theta so we want that minus sin theta upon 1 minus cos theta at x is equal to b should be 0 now what is x is equal to b x is equal to b means c times theta minus sin theta is equal to b so so basically what we want is minus sin theta 1 minus cos theta divided by 1 minus cos theta should be 0 when this c times theta minus sin theta is equal to b okay this is what we want okay so basically <clears throat> this implies that sin theta should be sin theta is these are the two equations which we have to solve simultaneously so sin theta is equal to 0 the first equation says it means that theta is equal to 0 or pi okay so from here when theta is 0 then it means that there is nothing b is equal to 0 okay so there is no no sensible equation we are getting so when theta is equal to pi from here we get c into pi minus sin pi that is 0 is equal to b so you get c is equal to b upon pi right so this is the uh, solution you get okay this is a family of this is obviously a cycloid okay so this is how we have to solve the free boundary uh, problems, variational problems. Thank you.